So I guess I'll start this off with just a general um, general anecdote. And I, I've got notes here because there's statistics <laughs> involved and I want to get them right. So basically, um, you may have heard about this, but there was this 80-year study done at Harvard. They started 80 years ago, and it's the longest standing study done on happiness. So they took uh, several thousand participants, and I think initially it was several hundred, and then they started studying that several hundred, the, the children that they had, and they followed them through their whole life. And it spanned 80 years, so they got like a full-blown lifetime out of these people. And um, in the end, it was several thousand people that they studied. And there's this wide variance in the quality of their life, as you would expect with thousands of people. Some were like destitute, some were super successful, some were in between. It was a full spectrum, so really, really robust study. And they were asking these people throughout their life about their subjective quality of life, like how happy do you feel? And they had a whole battery of questions that they'd ask them and they'd score them and they did this consistently for 80 years. And <clears throat> the purpose of this was pretty obvious, right? They're trying to get to the root of this like human-wide question, what, what's a good life? Like, what actually produces the result that we're really after, which is just a good, fulfilling, happy life. And they couldn't really find anything that correlated. They were like, wealth doesn't seem to do it. Like there's wild variation in um, people who are wealthy, like how happy they were. So th there's no correlation there. There's no correlation to success or status. Um, there's no correlation to any of the stuff actually that they thought might do it. And what society very clearly thinks might do it, like more money equals more good equals more happiness, right? Well, no, actually, according to this study anyway. Um, there was only one thing that correlated, and it correlated across the board with like nearly all of the participants, was the quality of their relationships with the people around them. And it was a staggering, like thousands of people uh, had the, the exact same, the people who didn't have quality relationships, like didn't have a good family dynamic and friends, they literally died earlier. They died earlier and they reported um, significantly less happiness, fulfillment, quality of life than the people who had strong relationships, good friends, good marriage and so on and so mm -hmm. forth, children that they had good relationships with. And so there was a quote from the, uh, one of the leaders of this research team and uh, one of the modern day researchers, because as you can imagine, some retired and then they passed it down to um, you know, a new team and it, it went through many phases. And, and one of the modern, there's a TED talk on this where he says, um, <laughs> he put it really simply, he's like, loneliness kills. Objectively, statistically, scientifically, <laughs> With the, in the longest standing study on human happiness, he reported loneliness kills. And what really matters in life is relationships. And we've discovered that this week, I think, like we were talking about last night, it's not necessarily about the practices and meditation and like learning to make a chi spirit bomb with your hands. <laughs> like all, it's, all of that stuff is great and that can um, open you up further to life but the purpose is to open up to life. It's not to get real good at sitting meditation. The sitting meditation is to open you up and what you're opening up to is connection. So all of this is just to say that the quality of your relationships is really important. It's really worth um, understanding social dynamics and deciding like what your purpose in these relationships is. And I think that's the place to start here because, um, well, first of all, uh, does, has anybody heard the term uh, Ubuntu, this African saying? Yeah. The Celtics, the Celtics used it like in 2008, Doc Rivers spoke about this, but it, it's, I mean, it's very, very, very old. 
they talk about this as well in uh, the Lion Tracker's Guide to Life book, but it translates as an African saying that translates to I am because of you. And you can imagine out in the wild, like we were completely reliant on each other. If we were solo, like lone wolves out in the, we wouldn't be here, right? We would have gone extinct long, 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 long time ago. So cooperation between humans and relationships is the whole reason that we're alive in the first place. And um, again, that's just to say, this is like absolutely intrinsic. And there's so many times in my life, I'm naturally kind of a hermit, like introverted. I don't need or, or feel the need anyway for a lot of, like social interact a lot of the time I, I really um, I really like to be alone and so that 18 months that I was in isolation I was super happy and I'm just like oh wow this is it, it was kind of freaky how happy I could be in that in that kind of um, environment do I thinking like okay could I could just like get a cabin up in the mountains somewhere and live alone with maybe a dog and like sit all day and and um, that would have suited me just fine and then I come to San Diego and suddenly there's this community and I'm spending time with Adam and our friends every night. I am finally reminded after 18 months alone, like, oh, right, this is really just better. <laughs> this is better. Even for me, uh, this is just better to have in your life. Um, and uh, I guess I'll, I'll wrap up this sort of intro with a very brief story about Paul Cech. Uh, last time I was at, does everybody know who Paul Cech is? He's up on the wall there somewhere, I think. Um, I was up at Paul's house. It was just the two of us uh, basically just hanging out and talking. And um, at a certain point, he's like, oh, you're, you're a hermit like me. You're a hermit like me. Like we, we love to be alone. And he goes, be careful with that because the biggest growth in your life will come through your relationships. And he said that very pointed and direct and as like a, um, one hermit to another, hey, don't become a hermit <laughs> because your relationships are where the biggest growth will come. And at the time, I'm about to like head to South America and start this apprenticeship for 18 months and go into isolation. I'm like, all right, Paul, well, see you on the other side, buddy. <laughs> Too late. Uh, but nonetheless, he's, he was completely right. He was completely right. And the growth, I think, for each of us that's come out of the interconnection in the group here is the deepest growth. Like, it's one thing for me to talk and teach, and I think, like... Um, these concepts will be useful for you and, and all of that, but really the, the much deeper than that is just the fact that we were all here together and the, the sort of bond that's been formed.